I am Anusha and welcome to story time and today we're gonna read Leo and the Octopus by Isabel Marinov and Chris Nixon okay let's do this guys Ooh, there are many many octopuses guys as you can see okay let's do this can you guys see okay for all the Leos of this world and especially for my very own very own one I am for Oli and Elsa CN oh that's so cute guys so let's do this Leo and the octopus Ooh. the world was too bright for Leo and too loud I must be living on our own planet he thought None of the other children understood Leo, and he didn't understand them. Guys, he's in an alien planet, and while well, everybody is in their own world, and Leo is wondering, he was wondering if he's been living on a wrong planet, because because nobody nobody understood him. Nobody understood him. At home. At home, Leo would hide inside his card box to read. Then he could relax. As you can see, he's made a card box and that's that's his world for him. And he could go inside it and just read. Because life on the wrong planet was stressful. Stressful and tiring and lonely. Guys, until the day Leo met Maya, guys, life on the wrong planet for Leo is very, very stressful, very, very tiring, and very, very lonely. And well, until the day, until the day, Leo met Maya. Leo met Maya. And, and you're right, Mona, we've been wondering the same thing. We've been wondering the same thing like Leo, but then again, until the day Leo met Maya. Maya, Maya, Maya was an octopus. She has eight arms, three hearts and a beak like a parrot, said Edgar, the octopus keeper. Uh, she looks like an alien, Leo thought. I feel like an alien. We should get along. Ooh, guys! Well, well, well. Everybody meet Maya. She is a beauty. She is a beauty. She has eight arms, three hearts, and a beak like a parrot. And well, look at that. Look at that. Well, that's so cute. Leo knew everything that there was to know about lots of things, but he didn't know anything about octopuses yet. So he went to the library and look at that. He's made some notes, guys. He's made some notes. Well, let's read Leo no Leo's notes, guys. Octopus have, octopuses have been around for about 300 million years, long before the dinosaurs. Their distant relatives are snails. Well, who knew? They can camouflage themselves or express how they're feeling by changing their color and texture. How brilliant! They release a cloud of black ink when they are under attack to confuse their predators. Mm. Octopuses can solve puzzles and open child-proof jars. With their soft boneless bodies, they can squeeze into tiny cracks. That's some amazing facts about octopuses, guys. Well, maybe, maybe Maya and I could be friends, Leo thought as he read. He didn't know much about friendship, but he was determined to give it a try. Well, maybe Maya and I could be friends. Maybe, maybe. Let's, let's find out. The week after, Leo went back to the aquarium to see Maya. He told Edgar, the octopus keeper, everything he had learned about octopuses. Sold, no bones, puzzles, masters. Mm. Edgar was impressed, so impressed that he had an idea. Would you like to meet Maya? He asked. You can touch her if you'd like. Ooh, that's exciting. Leo was nervous. Leo was 
was nervous. What if, what if Maya didn't like him? He reached into the tank and struck Maya's head just like Edward showed him. Guys, wow, Leo's been very brave. He's been very brave, guys, and now he'd like to meet his, well, new friend. He'd like to be friends with Maya, and look at that. He wants to shake hands with her, and he is dipping his hand, and he looks very, very nervous. Leo was scared Maya could swim away, but she slowly reached out one arm and as she touched Leo's hand, her skin started turning white and smooth. Leo knew this was a good sign. It meant that Maya was feeling calm. If only humans were easy, as easy to understand. Wow, look at that guys, look at that. There's a new found friendship right there and they are shaking hands and they are, look at that, and he's, Maya's turning white and smooth and that means, that means she is calm. I think she likes you, said Edgar. Why don't you come back and visit every Friday? Leo was excited. From now on, Friday would be Octopus Day. Every Friday, Leo built new puzzles for Maya. Challenging puzzles, very challenging puzzles, impossibly challenging puzzles. And Maya solved them all. Guys, the friendship's growing. And look at that. And Leo's building puzzles for her. Puzzles for her and challenging ones, very challenging ones, and impossibly challenging ones. But then again, Maya's, Maya's solving them all. One Friday afternoon, when Leo arrived at the aquarium, a lot of people had come to visit Maya. Too many people. Maya doesn't like camera flashes, Leo thought. Just like me. Look at that, guys. Now that everybody's trying to visit her, everybody's trying to take pictures of her, and she is so scared. She is so scared, and she doesn't, she just, apparently she doesn't like flashy lights. And look at that. Leo is so scared for her. Maya had turned red. Leo knew this was a bad sign. It meant that Maya was feeling stressed. Watch out, Leo said, but it was too late. In a split second, Maya had darted to the surface of the water. And and host of visitors with a jet of cold water. Guys, well, Maya panicked. She turned red and she hosed her visitors, guys. Leo knew exactly how Maya felt. Sometimes he wished he could squirt water all the, all the, at all the things that annoyed him to make them disappear. Leo wondered if Maya could use a pair of sunglasses, but they probably won't fit her. Wouldn't fit her. So he put up a sign instead. Look at that. No, no camera, please. Well, well he's, been, he's taking care of his friend. And his friend doesn't like flashy cameras, flashy lights. So, well, well, I don't think Maya could wear glasses. So he has put up a sign. No camera, please. Everyone had left except for one small boy. Uh, Maya has eight arms, three hearts, and a beak like a parrot. Would you like to meet her? Leo asked. After all, who wouldn't want to meet an alien? The boy said. The boy said, yes. Ooh, guys, there's someone else. There's someone else who'd like to meet Maya. Maya touched the boy's arm. Her skin turned smooth and white. Leo knew this was a good sign. That means Maya likes you, he explained. Then Leo told the boy all about cute octopuses, shaped like umbrellas, clever octopuses pretending to be curls, and about blanket octopuses that looked like superheroes, and agronaut octopuses floating in cells. And the boy listened closely until Leo had told him everything he knew. Guys, now he's taking the boy, he's taking his, well, a new friend to an adventure of octopuses, as you can see, and also his friends with Maya. Then they walked home together. Leo knew a little bit more about friendship now, and he knew that this was a good sign too. Guys, how amazing! He met another friend, and he made friends with Maya, and they both are friends with Maya, and look at that. Now he know a bit more about friendship.
that is so amazing that is so amazing okay now we have some very very good thoughts from the author let's read them from isabel i've been very fascinated about octopuses the strange alien like creatures when I learned that the giant Pacific octopus changed its color according to its mood, I was mesmerized. How convenient would this be for kids with autism? From my experience with my own son, I've, been, I've, been, I've seen that they often struggle to make sense of facial expressions in others. As visual learners, children on the spectrum would, be, would most certainly welcome this color code communication. This simple idea was the seed for Leo and the octopus. I am grateful for Tony Atwood for reviewing this story. His compassionate and pragmatic book, The Complete Guide to Asperger's Syndrome, is my reference when I struggle to understand my son's way of functioning. Oh, that's a cute little message, guys. Okay, from Tony Atwood, Professor Tony Atwood. This enchanting story describes the world as perceived by an autistic child and an octopus. In some ways, they both seem like aliens, both and both share a talent for problem solving. As a child with autism, Leo finds it difficult to determine how someone is feeling by reading their facial expressions and body language. He appreciates how octopuses change color according to their mood and wishes humans had the same simple color code. The story also illustrate, illustrates another aspect of autism, that is, finding friendship through similar interests. The sensitive descriptions throughout the book of what it is like to have autism are accurate and perspective, perceptive on so many levels. Guys, this book is amazing on so many levels. So many levels when, well, Leo is a bit, he's a bit different. And then again, and then again, he found a very beautiful friend, Maya, and he knew, he knew, he knew the meaning of friendship through Maya. And he also found some, other, some good friends, another good friend. And look at that. That is so amazing. Leo and the octopus. A dreamy, thoughtful story about a child with Asperger's syndrome and the special bond he forms with one of the Earth's most astonishing creatures, that is Maya. Well, 